everyone, and welcome to Live Laugh Stuck. Previously, Jax does Homestuck, and this is my special anniversary episode. On December 12th at 12 p.m. Central Time, I uploaded the first episode of Jax does Homestuck. Well, that's not quite true. I've mentioned this a few times, but it only makes sense to go back and look at the history of the podcast on its special anniversary episode. Heads up, this is going to be very self-indulgent and me doing a lot of talking about myself and how I got to where I am today. If you're not into it, uh, I've actually provided some time skips in the description, which I'm saying right now to make myself actually do it. So feel free to skip ahead to where I talk about the listener survey and other stuff that's slightly less focused on me, as less focused as it can be since this is my podcast and I'm the sole host. Anyway, let's go back. Back to me first getting into Homestuck. Back in mid-2012, I was 21, just moved to a new city for a new university, and still delving into Tumblr. I was also super into webcomics, a topic I plan on talking about later on, maybe as a patron stuck episode. But I was following as many of my favorite creators on Tumblr as I could. One notable creator was Jeff Jocks, whose name I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, and whose webcomic, Questionable Content, was and still is in my top three favorite webcomics ever. One day I was scrolling through Tumblr when I noticed he posted a picture of a character with ridiculous anime shades. This normally wouldn't have piqued my interest, but as I skimmed the post, I noticed it was longer than I expected, and Jeff was actually getting annoyed, if not outright frustrated, by the replies. People were using his anime shades post to dunk on Homestuck, which, for one, he wasn't even making a Homestuck reference, and for two, he was friends with the creator, Andrew Hussey, and he was telling people it was actually a good webcomic, so maybe back the fuck off from shitting on it on his posts. I was vaguely aware of Homestuck by this point, but I have no idea what I actually knew about it. Probably what most people knew. There were gray aliens, right? But I didn't need to know anything else, because if it had the Jeff Jacks seal of approval, then fuck yes am I going to add it to my vast collection of webcomics I try and mostly fail to keep up with. This next bit is kind of fuzzy, because I vaguely remember not quite getting into it the first time I tried to read it and having to try a second time, but I don't know if that first time was pre or post Jeff's approval, but regardless, I ended up binging that thing like nothing else. I was fully invested and even backed the Kickstarter that came out that September, snagging a poster as a reward. But at that time, I just never even considered engaging with the fan base. Not because I had anything against the fan base, there was just some divide in my head where Homestuck was a webcomic and I didn't exactly seek out fans of Girls with Slingshots, or Gunner Creek Court, so even though I was technically aware there was a community of Homestuck fans, I just never considered it as an option. Plus, I was deeply involved in the Dragon Age fandom, so I didn't feel like I was lacking for an online community or obsession. Jump forward to late 2017. Now, I'm not going to pretend I remember everything I was thinking and feeling back then, but here's what I think think was going on. I had been in a creative slump for the majority of the past several years, but I was finally feeling the inspiration to draw. Something that's never been my main form of creativity, but something I like to dabble in from time to time. My issue was, and is, I have a hard time coming up with ideas of things to draw. The one thing that kept coming to mind? Kanaya. So, I drew several Kanayas, maybe a dozen or so, and thought more and more about Homestuck. You know what else I was thinking more and more about? Podcasts. Having recently gotten into The Adventure Zone and My Brother, My Brother and Me. And those two topics, plus my regular impulses to start new creative projects and fail to finish them, it's easy to see where this is going. 
After talking about this with my best friend Kyle for a month or so, he decided to support my creative endeavor and bought me a blue Yeti for my birthday in January 2018. Yes, that means my birthday is coming up and y'all should absolutely send me presents. Soon after, I solidified my podcast idea and released my first episode. Jax does Homestuck, where I read Homestuck out loud and then review it with my roommate, who still hadn't finished the comic at the time. I did very poor research, uploaded my podcast onto SoundCloud, and then went all surprise Pikachu when I quickly ran out of time and old episodes had to be banished into the void. That, along with Still not being in the community, having only a handful of listeners, not being very good at promoting myself, and not having anyone I talked to legitimately interested in what I was doing. Well, suffice to say, it only lasted a few months. It gnawed at me, though, in the back of my head. I started following more Homestuck blogs, though, but on Tumblr, it seemed most people I found only posted art, so there was still no real community feeling. What I did start to see in fall of that year was excitement over a Homestuck podcast. I'm sure you all don't need me to tell you which one. Now, I'll be upfront. I deal with depression and anxiety, so I wasted a good month hating myself for not keeping up with my own podcast and thinking maybe I should give up on a Homestuck podcast altogether and instead do a Shrek or Dragon Age one, before finally remembering that fans, in fact, love to have more than one cake to eat. But the reading Homestuck thing didn't seem like a good idea anymore. So after doing some thinking on what sort of analysis I thought Homestuck was missing, I decided on Gay Stuck, the first episode launching December 12th, 2018. Tumblr was also dying around this time, so I dusted off my old Twitter and started following some Homestuck accounts, not meaning to get quite as into it as I obviously did. And, well, most of the rest has been fairly recorded on both Twitter and in previous episodes. I got into a fan project, I made friends, promoted myself, and here I am, one year later. Which makes it sound a lot simpler and smoother than it actually was. It's been a huge learning process, and I'm still learning a ton. Ever since Gay Stuck, I've had a hard time settling on one series and had been sort of grabbing at them at seemingly random. What seem like small projects turn into big ones and vice versa. Starting with a new year, I have a general plan with how my episodes are going to look from here on out, but... Honestly, it's a constant balancing act between trying to stay consistent and doing what feels best to me. And that's just one of the things I know I need to work on. But I had a lot of fun this year. I made a lot of friends, got into more projects, got a panel on SawCon, and even tripped my way into modding SawCon. I put together videos, learned more about audio editing, got back into writing, the list goes on. I'm extremely thankful to my listeners and friends for supporting me and helping me, and to all my guests for coming on and sharing their projects and thoughts. It's been a hell of a year, and I'm excited for the next, especially with all the new podcasts that started popping up in the latter half. I do want to take this time to give a shout out to all my guests. Links to their social media will be included in the description. So we'll, we'll start from the top and, and work our way chronologically. Aiden didn't technically guest this year, but his review of Act 1 with me from the first time I tried to start this podcast helped me realize how much fun it was to have someone to talk things through with. Anna started off my Fanstuck series with her musical, Time's Apprentice, which is now available in full on YouTube. Abby was the first and only person for a long time to take over the podcast to talk about their thoughts, this time about Candy Gamsey, but they also helped me review Act 2 and did my podcast art and a lot of my episode art and just lots of art. Feffy came on to talk about their wonderful fan venture, Abode Bound, which I still absolutely love. Crow came on twice to talk about SawCon, once before and once after. And I know I'll find excuses to bring them on again. Speaking of SawCon, Reese and Nell came on to talk about it as well, to get perspectives from other staff members, and Reese also reviewed Act 3 with me. 
I tracked down Arrow, lover of the felt, to help me review Intermission. iMac and I actually reached out to each other simultaneously so they could come talk about their fan venture, fanfic, artistic experience, House of Dirk. My good friend Phil came on to talk about Heritage, their ancestor fic. Mara started off my problematic fave series to talk about lovely Jake English. Goblin joined to promote the distant past zine, a zine about ancestors, which is now out. Leo talked with me about Cancri for the problematic fave series, and that's still a really popular episode because we just all love our Cancri. Dami made her debut, getting me in gear to talk about Jade's pester quest route, then later to take over the show to talk about crack shipping. She is also the one who did the theme for the podcast. I finally got an excuse to get my friend Calamon to talk about their very, very long and very, very good crossover fic, Stargate Alternia, currently over 1.6 million words. DJ joined me to talk about the wonderful Z-Boys of Friendsim, Zebra and Zabidi. And finally, Kara was the last new guest of the year when she came on to talk about her fan venture, Death Shift. I appreciate all of my guests for sharing their passions and making my podcast what it is today. Just think, I had never planned on having guests on, and my first fan stuck episode wasn't until mid-April. And... Thinking of alternate timelines, around the end of Gay Stuck, I had no idea what I was going to do next, especially since Girl Stuck ended up taking less time than I thought, and I half wondered if I should hang it up and leave it there, a three-month-long podcast and no more. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I kept going and decided to do Fan Stuck and have way more side series and ideas than I know what to do with. I'm glad you all supported all these changes and growing pains, and I hope you'll continue to do so as we move forward. Now, let's get into the listener survey results. I'll try not to make it too statistic-y and give you some good summaries of what I've seen and what that might mean. First off, the turnout. I'd say I got about half of my regular listeners to take the survey, which I think is pretty good engagement. I definitely appreciate those of you who were able to take the time and help me get some new perspective on the podcast and how I can improve. As for the demographics, most of you are under the age of 25, which I expected, but a few of you are over 30, so hey, shout out to you. As much as I love my younger friends and listeners, it's nice to know there are older fans out there. Also, while most of you are from the United States of America, a good third of you are from around the globe, so thanks for listening. Most of you started listening because you were already aware of me, whether because we're friends or you follow my Twitter, but a good chunk of you were looking for any Homestuck podcast you could find, and you picked me out. Which tracks because about half of you listen to three or more Homestuck podcasts, including... Look how sane and linear we're being, which I forgot to include on the survey, so thanks for filling that in. Speaking of other podcasts, quick plugs for my friend's Homestuck podcasts. Dami, who I mentioned previously, is a two-time guest and composed my theme music, runs a podfic podcast called The Doom Timelines, which actually premiered on this podcast, but... She did do some touch-ups to the episode, so it is nice to listen to it on her podcast as well and all the other podfics that she has out. She's always looking for new voice actors, so head to the link below to check out her Twitter. Crow, who I mentioned earlier, created Sakon and was on two of my episodes about it, also has a podcast called Esplurb, which they host with Bana and talk about creativity in the fandom and fandom news. Link to their Twitter also below. But back to the survey. While it seems the majority of you listen on release day to almost every episode, coming up in close second are those of you who binge several episodes at a time and skip around to the episodes you're more interested in. I am definitely filing this information away. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm keeping it in mind for sure. Another thing I'm going to keep in mind is that most of you listen on Spotify, which is great. Except Spotify doesn't like my links, which means all the helpful links I post for you ends up being pointless. I'm now trying to remember to add the link to my Buzzsprout page in plain text so you can get all the links there. 
but I'd like a solution that didn't require you to go to a secondary site. A couple of you also like to use YouTube, so I am going to try to upload there more often. I currently have stuff uploading every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, including new episodes coming out, so hopefully I'll catch up in time. As for where you follow me, it's all pretty much on Twitter, which makes sense, because that's also where I promo the most and am the most active. About a quarter of you follow me on three or more platforms, basically Twitter, Discord, and one other, so I appreciate that. On to episode timing. Most of you are fine with how things are now, with having one main episode a week releasing on Wednesday, and Saturday being my bonus episode day. Speaking of the bonus episodes, thank y'all so much for basically letting me give myself permission to cut down on bonus episodes, because I was starting to realize that two episodes a week was killing me. I'll get more into how scheduling is going to change later, though. Now, about your opinions on various parts of my podcast. Most of you like everything I put out, so I really appreciate it. I'm glad I can post good content. Some of you left notes on things that could be improved, and I'm doing my best to take those notes to heart, so hopefully you'll have a better listening experience. Overall, everyone's favorite series is Fanstuck, which isn't much of a surprise, with Problematic Faves being a close second. As for my discontinued series, Gaystuck overall reigns supreme, and y'all have expressed interest in me revisiting it and Girlstuck in the future. Probably not for a while, though. As for the final open-ended questions, I really appreciate what y'all had to say. For one, you gave me some good people to look into for future Fanstuck or other episodes, as well as some good segments. I'm keeping vague about it because I don't want to accidentally commit to something, Trust me that I've taken them under advisement, and I actually have a suggestion box open now on my Discord. Also, y'all had some really nice things to say about me, and not going to lie, but some of that shit made me tear up. As much as I love talking about myself, I feel weird hashing out compliments people give me, so I'll try to summarize the main points. Basically, what keeps you all coming back, and what I hope to continue to provide, is that the podcast is pretty relaxed and less judgmental environment, and apparently I have pretty good analysis sometimes. You also appreciate that I get creators on to talk about their projects, and some of y'all are just here because you can't get enough Homestuck content, period. Which, you know, mood. And listener survey done. Now, what does this all mean? How will this affect the future? Well... Basically, a lot of it is nice to know that I'm good keeping my same episode days and pacing and topics. I know staying the same is actually the opposite of what will change, but it was important for me to learn what I'm actually doing is working for people. That said, there's one trend I noticed that I'm actually going to go against. You all really like episodes where I have guests on. And I get it. It's nice to hear a conversation rather than a monologue, and hear other perspectives and promo other creators. I am by no means going to stop doing that. However, I do like talking by myself a lot, and I want that to go back to being a primary thing I do. Thus, my Jack's Yak series, starting with talking about positive communities, which I released a couple weeks ago, and which should have another episode coming out next week. Also, I want Problematic Faves to stay as a short bonus episode, but I also only want to do semi-weekly Saturday episodes at most, as I mentioned before, so Problematic Faves will be put on hold until Pester Quest is done. My general schedule outline for primary episodes, which is of course subject to change, will be Jack's Yak's episodes every other week and on the off week, switching between Fanstuck and Readstuck episodes. I'm also going to try to be getting more Reed Stuck episodes in reserve so they can also serve as my filler episodes as needed. But that's just sort of the general idea for what I have going on. Thank you all so much for supporting me this far. It's been a great year and it's only getting better. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you for listening to, sharing, and engaging with the podcast and to my patrons out there who helped me get to a point where I can 
pay for my own hosting. Like, I'm not losing any money a month because you let me, like, pay to keep this podcast going. I really super appreciate it. And I hope I'm able to continue to provide the content you all deserve going forward. With that said, happy anniversary to me, to us. Happy almost new year. Happy other holidays you may or may not celebrate. And I'll see you guys next week.